Hi again, welcome to the Ultimate Soccer Footwork Training Manual. Within this manual overview, we'll be talking about grouping attacking techniques. As we have disclosed in previous video on grouping within the how to apply the Ultimate Soccer Footwork system on the soccer field. Now within this uh, diagram of our training manual, we I will try to illustrate more with you about what goes on in, in, in the minds of our opponents. Uh, with their vision awareness and at the same time you see a silhouette of their left leg right leg and 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 get an idea of what's going on but it's still the same concepts in smaller manner but it's as you build on on upon each segment you'll be able to understand more now with this said as I made mention in previous videos of vision awareness behind your opponent are all blind spots right Behind each opponent is a blind spot. They don't know what's going on behind. And as in the grouping video, we made mention about uh, interference that goes on in the back. Now, as we try to come make things get clearer and clearer, you will understand now why things were go uh, interference would occur. It's because the guys at the back can't see what's going on behind them. So the interference, because it's their blind spot, as we have discussed in vision awareness, what happens is it will create interference because of blind spots. Notice the keeper's vision is it's, it's more wider as as you go out, right? The keeper is the star, guys. Now, this is you. You have the ball and you start to dribble wide as we disclose in dribbling and attacking plan. What happens is your opponent starts to turn off access, right? We're just turning them right here, guys. We're just going to turn them around, rotate them slightly. And they're trying to contain you, but what happens is their 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 blind spots now changes, and this line just this line just go across this way, right? And as you add more people, let me erase this real quick so you see what's going on. So you are dribbling across to come down on the corridors, as we made mention of. You can use dribble plan, attacking plan A, and so forth, right? But your opponents now start to turn sideways. Not, they're not set in stone, guys. They're moving, but we just turn them sideways as they're trying to contain you, right? But notice the line that runs through them and their vision, the, 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 the blind spot now becomes behind them, right? So what happens is the guys who are behind them can see and the guys who are behind them can see. Let me turn this guy around, let you see what's going on. Because these guys, some will leave their space, right? And they're rotating. They turn at a different angle. So the the guys at the front in this row, row one, are there. But they're coming across each other. And they collide horizontally or vertically just because of the interference of what's going on in the blind spots, right? And I hope you understand this. What's going on in the blind spots? The guys at the front can't see behind them. So the guys who are, they're not seeing what's going on. So the, they, the guys at the back will collide with the guys at the front because the guys at the front is moving. So it's your duty as the player, as the practitioner, you need to trick the guys at the front, right? You need to trick the guys at the front so that they create problems for the guys at the back because the guys at the back can't see so well. So you use the guys at the front by means of having them interpreting what's going on in your movements or slowing them down, trapping them in the interpret stage. And then the guys at the back who are trying to pass, not knowing. So let's say the guys at the back, let me let you see what's going on. This is this row that we're talking about that just turned. This is the first row. Oh, sorry about that. You have the ball, and these are the guys that are turned this way to you, facing you. They're facing you now. They want the ball. And you notice the guys at the back, the second row now. These guys are now in the second row, right? They're trying to come in into the middle to get the ball from you. What you can do is move wide or move in a slant angle, and then these guys will go right which would be left on, on viewing this. This is our right writing, but left in the real game. And what happens is they, they collide with the guys who are trying to come into the middle to get the ball from you. So what you did was you trick the first row. You control the first row, which end up, cre which, which creates problem for the second row. 
because the first row can't see what's in their blind spots behind them, right? So what happens is you move them wide and then they trick the, they collide in each other. And you'll see this many times in football games where interference occurs just because the players understood or understand the concept of interfer interference. And it's also interference of using the, the defenders or are, are the guys at the front row to trick the guys at the back row and the guys at the middle row to trick the guys at the last row and it's continuous endless cycle however there are many times you will see shots taken for example let's say you have the ball right here right and you dribbling in and these defenders are coming across trying to contain you what happens is sometimes they'll get into the vision of the keeper right they'll get into the keeper's vision and the keeper is not able to see so chances are sometimes there are many shots taken as the defenders, let's say the defender is going this way out of the vision of the keeper. And then the guy just take the shot, boom. And as he moves past, the keeper is surprised. And the, the, the I mean, this is a six yard box, guys. I know we're just using it because the pen tool is so awkward right now. So you take the shot as the defender moves out of the way or your opponent moves out of the way. So perfect timing is also important. I mean, the defender might flinch or jump and you kick under his legs and free kick walls and so forth. You'll see many times these things occur. But you have to understand that if you can get into the vision of your of the defenders, you can somehow in, interrupt the, the vision of the goalkeeper by using the defenders to, to screen out the keeper. Let's say it by using the defenders to screen out the keeper's vision. Let's say you're attacking. It is your duty now to group these guys in such a way that they create a, a, a problem for your, your goalkeeper's vision. I mean, you take them wide and you get them into the keeper's vision while the keeper's adjusting. And you take a shot to the far corner, away to the far post, this post. Messi does this all the time. No matter what, it's always just, just like a textbook for Leon and Messi. What he does, he groups the defenders and disrupt the keeper's vision, right? He groups the defenders and disrupt the keeper's vision and set himself up to take a shot around the wall. Let me erase this real quick so you guys see what's going on. So Messi will normally get shots off in these areas, right? But many of Messi's goals are scored because of defensive errors. Not goalkeeper's errors, but defensive errors. The defenders fail to pay attention to the factors of grouping and vision awareness. So Messi punishes them each time they make mis uh, mistakes with their vision by means of attacking certain points, squaring the ball at certain points, and punish these guys. With that said and done, the goalkeeper's vision is always at risk. So the goalkeeper is always telling you, get out of the way, you're blocking me, I can't see. So it's your duty as an attacker to use footwork in areas like these and dribble in areas like these and then dribble in patterns like these and understanding the concepts of grouping, right? and attacking techniques whenever you're grouping. So while you're attacking, you can still use grouping techniques by means of understanding the rules of the first guys in the first row, somehow create interference for the guys in the second row. And if it's turned sideways, the guys in the first row create interference for the guys in the second row. And the guys in the second row, right here, the guy, if it's turned sideways now, the guys in the first row create interference for the guys in the second row. And the guys in the second row create interference, second row, this is the second row, first row, and third row. They create interference for these guys. And we made mention, it's your duty to use the guys in the first row to create problem for the guys in the second row if they try to move to attack you for the ball. And vice versa. It's the same continuous triangle that is never ending. And it's a law that many top soccer players know and they are familiarized with it and they use it many times. Outstanding player Lionel Messi, uh, Ronaldinho, uh, Robinho, and De Nelson. Many of these top players know about these techniques when it comes to grouping your opponents and understanding uh, some of the things that goes on with vision awareness and so forth. With this said, I hope and trust that you have understood many of the concepts that we made mention in this video. If not, watch it over again. Thank you very much and hope to see you in other videos. Bye for now.